We began the broadcast with the White House firing and with new reporting on what is said to be the president's foul mood over a number of things, including the midterms. Here's perhaps another sign of it. He is, once again, leveling a favorite, unsubstantiated allegation about the election. Speaking to the Daily Caller, he said, quote, the Republicans don't win, and that's because of potentially illegal votes. When people get in line that have absolutely no right to vote, and they go around in circles, sometimes they go to their car, put on a different hat, put on a different shirt, come in and vote again. He went on to say, if you buy a box of cereal, you have a voter ID. Now, the last part is easy, because I'm not a big foodie, but there is one food item I do shop for a lot, and it's cereal. I basically live on cereal. That's why I look so healthy. I can assure you, except for Frosted Lucky Charms, which, as you all know, are magically delicious, no ID is necessary to purchase any cereal, thank goodness, or any other breakfast food. As for the fraud allegation, the cars and disguises and so on, I am told that we may have some video of that. Let's take a look. All right, obviously that is from the Ringling Brothers and Barton Bailey Circus. Maybe that is where Mr. Trump got the idea of people going into their cars and changing disguises because the president offered actually no evidence to back up his claim. And keeping them honest, that's probably because there isn't any that we know about. Don't take our word for it. Listen to the authorities who are actually in Florida who say there's no evidence of voter fraud. Ballot disputes, yes. Signature issues, yes. Outdated voting machines, yes. But not the kind of voter fraud the president is alleging. Not in Arizona either. Not anywhere during this election or according to state attorneys general and secretaries of state in any recent election. No evidence of people doing what the president says they did and did, he claims, in large numbers, large enough to flip the House. It not only is the president saying it now, he was saying it during the campaign. You know, if you go out and you want to buy groceries, you need a picture on a card. You need ID. You go out and you want to buy anything, you need ID and you need your picture. In this country, the only time you don't need it, in many cases, is when you want to vote for a president, when you want to vote for a senator, when you want to vote for a governor or a congressman. It's crazy. That was late July at a rally in Tampa, Florida, the president sowing the seeds of distrust in the electoral process, raising an obvious question the very next day. Does the president still believe that millions of people are voting illegally in this country? Is that the basis for this push for uh, requiring voter IDs? E even if there are 10 people that are voting illegally, it shouldn't happen. The president wants to see the integrity of our election systems upheld, uh, and that's the purpose of his comments. Sir Sanders could offer no evidence of widespread illegal voting, but these kind of allegations date further back for the president. Here he is tweeting about it just after taking office. Quote, in addition to winning the Electoral College in a landslide, I won the popular vote if you deduct the millions of people who voted illegally. Back then, just, there's no evidence of that. Back then, just like now, he offered no evidence. The voter commission he set up a short time later, in part, critics say, to validate his groundless claim, was disbanded after a year without finding evidence of the kind of voter fraud the president was alleging back then and still is today, despite the advice he got nearly two years ago from a leading Republican. So I would urge the president to knock this off. This is the greatest democracy on earth. You're the leader of the free world. And people are going to start doubting you as a person if you keep making accusations against our electoral system without justification. That was the January 2017 version of Lindsey Graham. Back now, Jen Psaki, Ken Cuccinelli, Abby Phillip, and Maggie Haberman. Maggie, does the... I mean, do we know if the president actually believes this or he just thinks this is effective? Actually, I was think thinking exactly about that when you were uh, just talking about this. It is often hard to tell whether he actually believes it because he certainly says things privately to people sometimes that make clear he knows how cynical this is. Uh, other times, he delivers this very convincingly and seems to believe it. I don't think it matters one way or the other. He's the president of the United States, and he is out there saying, who are you going to believe, me or your lying officials in every other state and judges who are telling you that what I'm saying is not true? It is a huge problem. There is already, for a variety of reasons, people are losing faith in institutions in this country and in the institutions of democracy. And if people don't believe that elections are fair and are being conducted well, that is a very, very dangerous slope to go down, and he is just pouring grease on it. Jen Psaki, I mean, when you were in the Obama White House, how seriously 
did the administration take what the president was saying on the campaign trail? Well, Anderson, this was the issue we were most focused on before we knew, of course, the impact of the Russia hacking. So this was in the months leading up to the election. Um, and this was uh, an issue we met about frequently to talk about how we could bring together a bipartisan group of members. There was actually a letter that was put out, and that was put out the same day that the um, tapes came out of uh, President Trump using some poor, poor taste language about women. But, um, you know, this was our focus. We wanted to bring together, as Maggie said, there was great concern um, about, uh, about this, and we brought Democrats and Republicans together to try to make the point that these are legitimate. We do, uh, we do have a process for monitoring. We do have a process for helping states and governors. That was really where our efforts were focused on. Um, and it's, you know, President Trump has been running for re-election, I think, for quite some time, as Maggie and Abby can attest. Uh, he just lost the midterms, as we've been talking about, and it's clear he's feeling the heat here, and he wants to begin to sow the seeds of doubt about the legitimacy of elections leading up to his own re-election in two years. Whether he believes it or not, that has to be in the back of his mind. And probably the thing that debunks this whole idea the most is the fact that if there was such massive voter fraud in 2016, and it always favored the Democrats, as President Trump seems to suggest, why would he have then been elected? <laughs> It just right. doesn't make any sense. There's no way that anyone would concoct a scheme to uh, allow President Trump to win the Electoral College vote, but not the popular vote if the intent was to have the Democrats win. Not to mention the fact that President Trump put together a commission on this, and they had to disband themselves because they couldn't, A, find any voter fraud, and B, they couldn't get the cooperation even of Republican states. So uh, this is so um, outlandish, and it also surprises me that no one has yet apparently told the president that you don't need an ID to buy cereal. Uh, it, it also highlights how kind of out of touch he is about how this all works, about what is required for people to go about their day-to-day -day lives. I don't think the president has gone grocery shopping in probably many, many years. Can do I mean, should the president be doing this? Breakfast. I mean, uh, <laughs> right, which some people do. Which is <laughs> I'm half Irish, so you know. We, but um, I, I think that the one of you commented about the, or I think it was Maggie, about the loss of uh, confidence in institutions. And let's face it, when you look at Florida, you can also see why there's some loss in the confidence of institutions. The same place has been making the same kinds of mistakes for so long now, it's unbelievable. And now uh, the elected official there says, you know, maybe I won't run for re-election this time. Um, I think she said that before, but this, this whole debate currently starts with those 83,000 83, votes that were there, weren't there. And when you don't follow your own rules, you invite the lack of confidence in the institution. Does the president push that and use hyperbole Yes, he does. Right. Why not stick but. to that, though, <laughs> rather than, I mean, this idea of people going in and out of cars wearing disguises mm -hmm. right. in numbers so massive that it affects, you know, the popular vote is ludicrous. When, when I was running conventions for Cruz in the uh, primary, we were winning the state conventions while the president was winning more primaries. It wasn't that, obviously, Senator Cruz won some of them as well, but we were coming away with delegates far in out of proportion to the primary results and they couldn't catch up to us and their strategic response was a messaging response it was when you have this two-level election that's not a fair system that's a rigged system and look that messaging worked mm -hmm. it worked and that's the lesson he's no, taken away that and, this and works it, it worked and um, and I understand even put fairly why that message worked because it isn't what people are used to, but it was the rules in place at the time. So when you when you start to get outside people's expectations, you invite exactly that kind of attack. And it worked for him there and in Florida. It, it definitely adds to the doubt, but I have very little sympathy for Broward County in having that all dumped on them. Th this is repeated, continuous, and I have I have serious questions about the legitimacy but, of what but they're doing. Two things can be true at once, right? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it, can yes. be, it can be true that yes. there are huge problems in Florida, that this continues over and over again, that, that the margin is, it, it appears to be so big that, you know, this is a mandated, state mandated recount. This isn't, that is why yes, this is yes. being done. It as came you, within as numerical you know. boundaries. Right, right. Um, number one. But number two, it can be true that people can have concerns about that and still not consider it responsible to claim that voters are sneaking into their cars and wearing wigs. And, Absolutely. And or that it's a case right. of voter fraud. And right. I think if you look at Broward County, 
Andrew Gillum and Senator Nelson probably would love to have had the ballots be right. more clear there. Right. Um, and I think any Democrat or Republican is probably looking at this thinking, are you kidding? Why isn't that fixed? Why isn't there a clear mm -hmm. ballot that everybody can yes. vote on? Um, so there's agreement on that. But that's not voter fraud. And I think that's the point uh, many of us are making. I mean, it's a complex waste right. of a messaging argument when the odds of this process overturning the result on election day are pretty slim. I mean, this could just mm -hmm. go as... Uh, as as everyone wants it to go in terms of the process playing out without all of these conspiracy theories being muddled up into it. it well, seems the, like, the, uh, the, the kicker here, though, in terms of impact, is when new votes come into the count that weren't there originally. I mean, that is an enormous change. And you can call it incompetence if you want. But in this divided era, no one will discount the potential right. for fraud and for intentional misconduct.